Hello, welcome to Money Monkey Africa, your go-to financial podcast. Today, we have Phineas Munene, who is a machine learning engineer and has done amazing stuff in the AI space. He co-founded a company called Finder, which enables you just, you know, leverage data and organize it to grow your business. And I love your shot, Phineas. Yeah. <laughs> Where there is data smoke, there is business fire. Yeah. So maybe someone's like data. That sounds like such a big name. Yeah. What would you explain data in a simple way? How would you explain so, um, it? Mm -hmm. uh, make it uh, clear for someone yeah uh, because um, okay let me just say this mm -hmm. uh, the people we are, we are we are we are targeting really do not understand the word data yes so you have to make it uh, in a way that they understand so basically data is um you being able to look at for example your customer mm -hmm. and then you can describe them so you can say uh, this is a customer from uh, Kileleswa, this is a customer from, um, this is a student, for example, this is a parent, you see now all those aspects, yeah. bringing them together. Yeah. Now we can tell you that is data. Mm. Yeah, so basically data is just the aspects that you use to describe your customer, uh, your business, uh, your products, and even your market at large. Yes, yeah. so uh, maybe I now know most business owners are like, oh, yeah, my customer. I really want to know who they are because um, when starting a business, you wonder who am I selling to, especially if your product is not going. So let's start from the early stages of, make, of starting a business and growing it. How would you advise people to go on and just, just to start, how to start? So Maybe I, 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 I look at uh, where we started, for, 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 for example, ourselves. Yes. So when we're starting our business, uh, the question was, we have an idea. We believe in our idea. We know this could work for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But you see, if, if you develop a product, I'm not going to buy it myself. Yeah. So if I want to build a business around it, I have to understand the people that I'm targeting, yeah. the people that I'm going to sell to. So we had one issue. We want to find out uh, how uh, do our customers behave, who are they? Because that's another issue. Mm. Who is your customer? Sometimes you might think you know them. But until you write down, let's say a customer. My customer is a 23-year-old student. Now, what are the aspects of that student? So, yeah, we had the issue. So, of course, it's online. You search Google. Uh, you, you go to, you try to, to, to talk to as many people as you can. But then it becomes a problem finding uh, clean data. So when I say clean data is um, how, how, how correct yeah. is that information that you're getting. So yeah, so at the start of the business, the first thing that people, I think people fail, uh, it's clearly stating um, what your solution is and who is it for. Mm. Because if, I mean, you might even, you, you might think that uh, because you are you are you are a student, all the other students have the same problem as you are. Yeah. So you go ahead and provide a solution for that, and then you find out yourself that you're the only one who has the problem. So um, understanding clearly, understanding whether someone that you think is your customer is going to be able to like is going to want to pay for the service that you're providing. I think it's very critical at the at, at the early stages of a business, so that. When you grow, uh, you already know, you have a canvas of what uh, your customer is, how they like uh, their products to, to be, and then you can also like, now in terms of growing your business, you know exactly who to target, where, 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 where to do it, and how to do it. Yes. Yeah. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, I now understand that I need that data, but then how... Can I get it easily? Yeah. So um, yeah, that's 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 a question that is li like uh, I would like to say it's it's hard, but then uh, easy. Yes. So how you get it easily? So easily is the keyword. Yes. Uh, so um, of course, normal normal ways we do. Uh, um, we ask people 
what do you like mm-hmm. what do you think uh, i mean what do you think about this product uh, you put out like two products in the market and then you try to see okay uh, how are people interacting with these two products so if you put like um um uh, okay any two products and then you try to see uh, this group of customers like this product the, the other group like the, this other product but um you, you realize if you change an, an aspect of that product maybe all the other customers that were buying the other product come to this other one so you try to see the dynamics how how is the customer reacting to this product mm. and then you are able to exactly know uh, how to offer that product so that's one yes. you experiment basically with the product yeah. the other of course uh, people do is surveys you mm. know you can like you can you can create an online survey you try to see what people are saying about a certain product of course the other thing is search online there is a lot of information online yeah so the the, the problem mm-hmm. the problem is that you are taking so much time doing yeah, that yeah exactly the other thing is uh, this is data collected from different sources mm. so you have to bring it together mm-hmm. and make sense of that data yes so then how do you do that yeah so again becomes it becomes an issue especially for a small business for someone who cannot afford a qualified data analyst a data scientist or even a business analyst we are talking of someone who is like um, making 10k uh, shillings a day mm-hmm. so how do they go i mean how are they going to pay someone who earns 200,000 a month so with that yeah of course so um there, there are different ways but uh, as we stand right now uh, i think it's very hard for a business really to uh, collect information or data yes. and then translate that data into you know some actions yes yeah but it's it's a problem we appreciate and that's why like we are here today yes yeah. so does you know you have this um is it a software or mm. ai learning machine yeah, yeah? yeah. and called lisa mm-hmm. um you'll tell me the full names of lisa yeah, sure. <laughs> and does it answer that problem of collecting that data and making it you know clear data yes yes so um the challenge so when we were starting actually yes we thought let's build uh, a tool to help people uh, make sense of their data yeah but then mm-hmm. the problem uh, we went to the market again as i told you are uh, trying to understand your customer so we go to the market and the people we are targeting don't even have the data so the question of okay, what, what what data are we helping them make sense of mm-hmm. so we realized we have to first of all help them organize this data yes. collect as much data as possible and then get um the work you see get them um, i mean um uh, get this off their shoulders the, the the work that they have to do to get the data so of course uh, so we have to reiterate our product and then uh, allow them to be able to collect as much data as they can automatically without mm-hmm. them you know um doing any work to yeah so going to 10 sites exactly mm. you know the surveys the forms and all that asking customer questions you know we do that on the bf so yeah we've uh, we've built lisa we, we started um last year uh we built uh an mvp a, a minimum viable product and that is when we realized oh people need to collect data before they make sense of the data mm-hmm. so again we iterated and then we added um, a solution to help them just collect the data mm-hmm. and then um so we are here at uh, three, three, uh, three things so first of all you collect the data and then um you try to understand what that data is saying and then now you can act after you understand so that is the, the foundation of lisa so lisa um, means intelligent mm-hmm. uh, shop or store assistant that is that is the, the idea that's where we started yeah so intelligent that's the li and then shop assistant okay yeah and how could can i on board on lisa i am a small business mm-hmm. how do i get there yeah Okay yeah so I'm um, currently um we're launching like uh, the final the or rather the 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 improved version of Lisa because again as I said I I do understand that there is no business without the customer yes. so so my priority and that's what we talk with our team I mean that that's the what dominates our conversations um how do we build something that the customer wants how do we build something that someone is actually going to pay for 
because again it's, it's business mm. so someone has to pay so yeah mm. so we've been you know just uh, trying modify. to modify yeah and then so um in uh the next version uh, we are we're launching next 20 days yeah yeah so um right now we have uh, on our website mm-hmm. uh, anyone can go on the website and they can pre-register okay for that version so yeah, yeah the website is uh, finder.com yes and finder is um P H I N D O R rather than F I yeah. I thought it was find uh, like find anyway yeah. Yeah. so how did you get into AI you know someone's like okay this guy knows a lot of things in data yeah, yeah, yeah. how did you get into AI machine learning yeah my, my my journey to this has not been uh, um let me say like very clear yeah so um i joined campus to study electronics engineering so i found myself uh liking mathematics okay been good in math yeah but i found myself liking maths more so i remember this is not it's not really good to say but mm-hmm. i remember uh, while in class people are studying everything else there's physics there is all sort of things but then i would only focus on math Mm. So I do mathematics and then one day mm, there is a guy I think I would like to mention him mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, Alfred is a uh, leads AI Kenya mm-hmm. so he comes to our school mm-hmm. and then shows us this really cool stuff with AI mm-hmm. like that's the first time I came across anyone talking about AI like in front of me I yeah. could see it on the internet so then he talked about it he taught us like uh what really goes on behind youtube like how is youtube able to know um the kind of content you consume and then recommend things that you look at and you're like wow this is actually what i like watching mm-hmm. so uh, after that I, i i developed like an interest on ai so just study and just try to see okay how does this how does this work and uh, so in 20 in 2017 then I, that's when i met my co- i mean that's when my co-founder and i thought first like the very first time we thought of building something so the idea was to build um a a, a website for students where they can match themselves with products <laughs> mm-hmm. so just like so that <laughs> like tinder for Business. for products yeah wow so um uh, how by the we did it we launched but it crashed yeah so uh we like um you go on the website just say uh i have kenya shillings uh 200 <laughs> i want shoes and then you just find like uh, shoes, shoes that are uh, mm-hmm. nearby and then yeah you get matched to that person mm. but no that's when lisa the idea of lisa came up mm. and uh, so we were trying of course these products that we were matching students with yeah we had signed up businesses yeah so then talking to these businesses it's like um we need to onboard you on our website so we found out that, that like they don't have um, data on their customers they, they don't really i mean they're not even interested in online stuff yeah and uh, they think um I don't know. They have this idea that it's scam sort of. So I got an interest to study these guys. And then so we studied them for a while. So after the website crashed, of course, we went on with our lives, but I kept uh, looking at, you know, what is the problem here? And of course, studying AI, I came to realize, oh, things, I mean, companies like um Safaricom companies like the huge companies mm-hmm. can afford data, like can afford the technology. Uh, to use data to market and uh, around this time there is uh, there was this conversation uh, that data is the new fuel mm-hmm. but then uh, i was wondering okay it's a new fuel but the like only two people who are implementing data yeah. driven uh, methods mm-hmm. in their businesses so of course uh, looking at um, the ecosystem and all that i mm-hmm. said okay let me do something let, let's, let's try to do something for the msmes uh, the small businesses so we started that, that's like that's when we started the journey so around 2018 yeah i don't know whether i can keep on it's really yeah it's really <laughs> long yeah. but you guys started in 2018 yeah, yeah? yeah. And what happened in 2019 when covid hit so, uh, <laughs> that is us in 2018 of course now building whatever we're trying to build now it's a whole data infrastructure remember mm-hmm. we're talking of collecting data all that but again i appreciate 
mm-hmm. the fact that we were ignorant we were young mm. uh, just in campus so you don't really know what you're doing yeah we just you just excited i know uh, these businesses don't have a, like they can't afford the technology to help them make sense of their data mm-hmm. i also know ai can help people make i mean ai rather machine learning can help people make sense of their data but that's all i knew yeah nothing to do with business nothing to do really with what it takes to build a startup yeah up. yes so um i think we feel like we feel like every morning <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. so uh in 2018 but uh so we tried and then in 2018 that's when i i ran into some um let's say personal issues mm-hmm. i graduated early i liked <laughs> early graduation mm. and then so um i think we went in the whole of 2018 nothing happened really uh, i went uh, but we registered that's when we registered the company yeah and then 2019 nothing mm-hmm. nothing uh 2020 i got like i got sick so mm, sorry. i had a, had a back back it was back pain mm-hmm. issues so yeah again 2020 the whole of it went yeah so at this point i was not interested in doing anything to do with business i just wanted to live yeah so yeah because the the experience in 2020 was very um like life changing mm-hmm. so i i i thought okay let me just live life mm-hmm. that so yeah but my co-founder used to like you know push you push so to an extent he started doing things and reporting to me like so <laughs> I, i see him is progressing mm. so he started reporting to me okay we've done this we've done this we've done this and I was, ah, at some point i said okay let's do it mm-hmm. so um 20 2021 i i i joined i joined uber mm, yes uh, as a delivery person yes uh, on my bicycle mm. And uh, at this time there was this guy who had started an incubator in Nairobi okay. for startups. So mm-hmm. I was following him very closely. Mm-hmm. I I inboxed him like I don't know like every day. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then he responded one day like after after three months he responded. He, he, they were building an app to help people manage their health uh, data. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at it I have an experience of health so I can come and join these guys and try and then so I tried I tried I tried until August and yeah, they took me in uh, to be honest I applied for a job I have no skills in mm-hmm. and they gave me the job <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah so I learned I learned on the job I learned on the job I, I really appreciate uh, I think it's good to say these things now. yeah yeah and uh, then so after um, after you know after a while that's now uh in that like two months i had like some money so we started building lisa but at this point remember again uh, we don't really have a clear goal we're just thinking let's help people make sense of their data but when you ask how we're just building the ai because now we, we understand uh, what is data analysis or is machine learning we understand that we understand the technology mm-hmm. but really the business aspect of it was an issue so i remember uh in 20 i mean 2021 around december we had an app but when you looked at, at the app we were like no it's not what we were looking for mm-hmm. so but then we either, like we, we deployed the app we launched and we started testing with the people and then that's when we, we started getting feedback mm. feedback and that is what we've been using for the whole of this year to re, to iterate on the app and build a product that really um help someone you know solve a problem wow yeah. awesome what a journey honestly yeah. yeah it's 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 really great that you know you share the reality of the journey because yeah. sometimes people are like it's we're going straight nice. yeah and what did you learn from all that p- the process yeah so for me i feel like um um like first of all this is why i tell people mm-hmm. see i left school yeah so someone who think that leaving school and pursuing dreams is a good thing mm-hmm. i only like if if you leave school um do not leave school because you have something else to do uh because you see at that point i, I mean right now what i'm seeing or, or what, I, what what i perceive to be my future 
will not be my future. When I go out there, that's when I actually experience life. That's when things happen. So I might get out expecting uh, to build cool stuff, get rich, be successful. But then when I get out there, you know, Nairobi people say like, uh, a ground, yeah, Ma. a ground, between <laughs> different, yeah. and then there are whips, you know, whips. Uh-huh. Yeah, so <laughs> you get like tons of those. Like because when I left school, can tell you I, I st- like. Can I can I quickly say? This? Yeah, yeah, sure. I started selling water. Mm-hmm. Like selling water yeah. when I'm living. Mm-hmm. I remember my friend kept me at his place for a, a month. Mm-hmm. I started Mjengo. Mm. Uh, these are all electronics engineering like student. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, there is um and then it failed. I had to like I, I think I did Mjengo and selling water for like a whole year. Wow. And then 2019, yeah, 2019 comes COVID. at the time, like uh, the COVID and the issues, and then I get sick. Mm-hmm. So I have to take care of myself at this point mm. and mm. still, yeah. like, Hannah living. Yeah. So uh, I went to an hospital, and mm-hmm. then this doctor is treating me, and I'm like, um, you guys, you have a very cool place. Mm. Do you have a website? Mm. He said, ah, no, we had, but, <laughs> you, you know, we took it down. I said, why, why, why? Uh. Why did you take it down? These are really cool places. I think it would be very, very <laughs> awesome if yeah. someone yeah. Uh, created for you a website, and uh. then your patients mm-hmm. could be booking online instead of you managing all this paperwork. Mm. And then she was like, ah, no, not interested. I, tell, I, I told her, no, mm. I can create your website. Yeah. And then um, she said, no, like, I don't know, like three times. Mm-hmm. So on my fourth visit, yeah. that's when she gave me the go ahead oh, and created wow. her website. And I told her I'll do it for free. Yeah. And then after that, I got a job that sustained me for a better part of 2019. Wow. Yeah. So um, I think um, the lessons, mm-hmm. the lessons are many. And it's very good to be clear. Uh, or rather, to be honest with yourself and understand what really uh, it takes to build a business or yes. to build a company. Yes. Do not be excited. There is a lot of news. Someone has raised this. A business is, mm-hmm. is expanding. Your friend with whom you graduated, mm-hmm. they are expanding their business to I don't know where. All that might get into your head. Yeah. But you have to understand the journey. Yeah. That I'm not saying that it is hard, therefore people should not do it. I'm saying understand the reality. Yes. That it is going to be hard. Sometimes you want to quit. Mm-hmm. And that thought is real. Yeah. Like I've had it. Mm-hmm. Like a few months ago, I was mm-hmm. like, ah, no, I'm not doing this. Yes. But then you understand why you started this, mm-hmm. why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Because, um, Again, uh, I always say this, any emotion or any feeling or any thought is justified because we are human, we are human beings. Yes. So if you feel like quitting, it's because it's hard and, yeah. and everything is like falling apart probably. Mm-hmm. So you feel like quitting. But then I also say any emotion or thought or um, anything that you feel, you don't have to act. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it is normal, like it is okay to have those things in yeah, your head yeah. without acting. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so uh, I think people should really understand why they are into something. Mm-hmm. Uh, why you are starting a business? Is it because it is, it is cool to be a founder, a CEO? Why? Why are you doing it? Yes. Will you like survive mm. uh, or see your business through success? So these are these are these are questions. So do not expect. Um, good stuff you have to create the good stuff yeah. by the way yeah. and then the other thing that i usually tell people is um sometimes i think you can make a living or rather i think you can make a living by employment you don't have to be an entrepreneur yes you don't have to be a founder i i, I know i know founders i mean i know people who are making good money than a whole business Mm. So it doesn't really mean for you to achieve financial freedom because again that is what the culture has taught people that entrepreneurship gives you like the freedom. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you can't handle a normal job, you can't allow, you, you can't handle this mm. because now everyone is looking at you. Mm. If this business fails, it's on you. If nothing works, it's on you. If anything is supposed to work, it's still on you. Yeah. So you so I think it's really good to be critical and very aware of the situation yeah. before you, you do anything. But then, if you're interested, naturally interested in solving problems, 
then entrepreneurship is like your, your way. Yes. Yeah. If you can't handle employment, you can't handle entrepreneurship. Yeah. I really love that. Yeah. And just when you were sharing, you know, about um, the challenges you faced before you got here, yeah? yeah, and you will continue facing other challenges, what do you do when it's hard? When you want to quit, but as you said, you don't act on the feeling of quitting, so what do you do as Phineas? So uh, myself is uh, I've built like uh, I thank I think I thank God for this. I have I have people around me mm. who really believe in the product. Yeah. So even when I want to quit, like uh, I'm just thinking about it, and then someone uh, comes, they they are very excited about Lisa. So I've managed to put together a yes. group of people yes. who really believe in what we are doing. Mm. The other thing is uh, when I feel like, you know, it's quitting time, I actually do quit. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you, I mean, this is good to understand. So when I feel like I need to quit, I actually do it and I stop working and I go somewhere and then chill and then see what happens. And the first day I did that, mm -hmm. it felt really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, as I continued to do it, it became normal. Yeah. So when I feel like quitting, I just stop. And then I know, like I'll go, I'll go, I'll go back to it. So it's not really fighting the feeling, mm. but uh, I mean appreciating it. Yeah. And I mean, okay, uh, okay, I quit. So yeah. what happens? Yeah. Still, I mean, you, you find yourself into it again, and if it's really your thing, that's why I say, if you quit and you don't come back, please do not come back. <laughs> if you quit yeah. and come back, then that's your thing. Yeah. And you should uh, focus on, and, and then it's life. Mm. There is negatives and positives, there is all kind of things. Yes. You don't expect the good things to happen always. Yeah, yeah. I really love that. Um, just as we finish off, any mm. final words in terms of people leveraging data, yeah, for their business or just, yes. I think, yeah, so, um, uh, something, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all in vain without data. Yeah. So for a business, you are not really. And when when we say data, we are not talking of uh, something new. I think people do this on a daily basis. So um, for anyone, uh, you know, who is uh, either starting a business or growing their business, if you really want to focus on building a business that sustains itself and yourself. You should really be very careful mm. when you are dealing, uh, when you, uh, I mean, between these two things, your customer and the product. Yes. And what is between the two is data, information. How is How does the customer perceive your product? Why do they pay for it? And then how should this product look like, taste, behave, or be for the customer to buy it? Yeah, so for any business, I mean, big businesses, small businesses, everyone, I think it's very important uh, to critically um, look at data as a tool mm. for business success and business growth. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, how can people reach you and just, you know, continue this conversation? Yeah, so I'm mostly active on uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. So Munene Phineas. Munene Phineas. Yeah, on LinkedIn. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Phineas, for coming. I honestly have learned a lot. We've gone through your journey. Yeah. And all I can say is that, you know, the process is worth it. And keep fighting, keep going, yeah. And guys, how to leverage data as a tool for your business, yeah. A business that will outlive you is just getting it and go ahead and look at Lisa on Finder and look at um, Phineas on LinkedIn and ask him questions. So this has been a really, really lovely podcast episode and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for listening.